And so I have a saying for myself, when I go back up home every Sunday evening, and I go through the front gate leading to my house, the place itself I call Tirnanog, which is an Irish mythological place. It's the land of the ever, long, ever, ever young. And as I go through the gates, I say to myself, there are no Trojan horses in Tirnanog. In other words, I'm not going to bring in with me through the gates any of the anxieties or any of the fears or any of the angers with which I, that I picked up in the course of my work week. I go in there, I leave all the Trojan horses outside the gate. I'm not going to entertain any thoughts of anxiety or anger or fear inside this compound. So that's what it would look like to me emotionally to be striving towards Christ consciousness. The fifth category is about physical health. And so I am jiva. I am a spirit in a spacesuit. I'm a soul on safari on planet Earth. I'm having an incarnational experience. So what does that look like? I have to honor that experience. I have to treat my body well. And particularly, there are three facets to that for me. It's about eating properly, sleeping enough, and exercising regularly. And the last piece, the first piece, was the piece I had most difficulty with most of my life. I didn't eat well. I ate a whole bunch of, for years and years and years, when I was um, a vegetarian, I never liked vegetables, and so I, I existed basically on tater tots and fried eggs. I told you that one time. I said to you at one stage on my 25th anniversary as a priest, saying, if we are what we eat, then you're listening to a talking tater tot. <laughs> and so trying to clean up my diet for the last few years, and coming to the realization that a meal is basically a sacrament. And since I actually I eat probably 95% of my meals alone, I have made it a kind of a ritual. I'm not a great cook, I'm a di disastrous cook, but whatever I manage to create for the evening meal for myself, I carry in procession to the table. And I'll always light a candle, and I have a Tibetan bells that I ring, and I pray before the meal. And I've come to the real realization over the years that if molecularly I am what I eat, then psychologically I am how I eat. And so eating mindfully becomes really, really important. That eating is a sacrament. Eating anything is a very intelligent dialogue between two life forms. So even if I'm only eating a spud, the potato itself has intelligence. It knew how to grow. It knew how to take light in from the sun through its leaves. It knew how to take nutrients from the soil through its root system. It's an intelligent system. We're now sharing intelligence with each other. <coughs> I'm borrowing its vital force. And in return, I'm offering the potato the experience of having a human incarnation. And so it's a very important and a very intelligent dialogue. I try to become aware of that fact as I'm, as I'm eating my meal. So that's what it looks like to try to create Christ consciousness at a physical level. The sixth category would be on a social level. What would it look like you know, to aim for Christ consciousness in a social level? And for me, it's about trying to, to show up more and more authentically in relationships. Not to show up superficially, uh, not to show up without depth, but to show up really, really deeply. There's an old adage that says, small minds talk about people. Greater minds talk about events, and really great minds talk about ideas. And I believe there's a lot of truth in that. I think there's so much damage done when we insist on spending most of our talk time speaking about other people rather than talking at least about events, but basically or primarily or most importantly about great ideas. And so that's the kind of notion I have for myself, to spend less and less time talking about people and less and less time even talking about events and more and more time talking about great spiritual ideas. So that's what it looks like for me socially to engage with people at that level. The seventh category would be financial. I take the prayer from the line of the Our Father, give us this day our daily bread. If I have committed to incarnation, then there are resources I need for incarnation. And finances are just a symbol of that. Whatever resources I need in order to discharge my mission adequately, I would expect that the universe would provide those for me. And that I would stand in the place where I know the universe lives in a dynamic exchange, that it provides all our needs that a universe that has created 200 billion galaxies containing about 150 billion stars each, it's not going to kind of um, you know, be stumped by providing me with whatever I need in order to live this incarnational experience adequately. So I expect that in my movement towards Christ consciousness, I'll be provided with the resources I need to discharge my obligations well. And the last category is my mission. 
what does it look like to discharge my mission in a Christ-conscious fashion? I shared with you years and years ago about a vision I had based on a great Jewish teaching from the Talmud, the teaching of the Lamad Vav, which is the notion that at any stage of human history, there are 36 tzaddikim, 36 enlightened beings on the planet, and that they literally hold the energy of the planet together. If it weren't for them, the whole experiment would just dissolve and disintegrate. And I said to you, it's a beautiful teaching. The only thing I disagree with is the number 36. You had a very, very powerful vision years and years ago where I saw the planet itself surrounded by what I can only describe as a lattice of light workers. And I could see that for every line of uh, latitude and every line of longitude where they intersected, there was a being of light stationed and one at each of the two poles. And when the vision was over, I sat down and I calculated how many light beings that was. And if you look at where the lines of intersection between latitude and longitude, the North Pole and the South Pole, there are 64,442 light beings dedicated to raising the consciousness of this planet. And so my aspiration towards Christ consciousness, my sense of mission is that I want to be like a little mirror, a small mirror on the surface of the planet that is deflecting some of that light down onto the planet and down into my world itself. So that's what it would look like. Uh, that's my template for how I aspire to or aim at the notion of Christ consciousness at an individual level. So that's like the first uh, part of the talk. Then I began to think about if I took those eight categories, those same eight categories, and I applied it to a planetary consciousness rather than just an individual safari, what would that look like? And so the first category is spirituality. And so religion is to the globe what spirituality is to the individual. So religions, in a sense, have been attempts to put groups of people in contact with the deep spirit. And so to use another metaphor, religions are like, they're like wells going down into the same water table. No well that doesn't access the water table is going to give you water. You have to go down into the water table to access the water. But each of the wells will taste a little bit differently. Because although it's the same water percolating through, depending on the stratification underneath your particular well, partic what kinds of rocks are around there, they're going to give a very special taste to it. Sometimes a toxic taste, sometimes a beautiful taste. So for instance, where I live up in Healesburg, I'm totally off the grid. I'm miles away from PG&E. Um, so I have my, my own water system. I dug down 260 feet, and I have a well that pumps water. But it's a very geologically diffuse area, so there's lots of heavy metals there. There's iron in the water, there's aluminium in the water, and there's lead in the water. So I had to do a three-part system to take out heavy metals. It's also hard water, so it needed to be softened. And they also have an ultraviolet system that kills bacteria in it. So there are three phases through which the water goes before I drink it. And so although the water table itself, a lot of the water is coming from the Sierra from melted snow, you know, 100 miles away. But as it comes through my particular stratification, you know, some of it is good and some of it is not good. So every religion is like a well going down into the water table. Each well is going to taste a little bit differently. And sometimes a particular religion will give a sweet taste to it. And at some stages of our history, they'll give a toxic, poisonous taste to it. So there are two ways of figuring out what does the real water really taste like. Two ways of doing it. You can take any well you like. And by going down deeply enough beyond the stratification, if you go way, way down, you get the pure water uncontaminated by the stuff through which it's percolating. And then you have your answer. Or you can take water from many, many different wells. And by comparing them, if you find out the commonalities, you found out what the real water tastes like, you know, apart from the contaminants. Sometimes even the buckets we let down to take up the water themselves provide a special taste or a special contaminant. And so when I look at planetary consciousness as it moves towards Buddha nature or towards Christ consciousness, I want to see if we can aim at a spirituality which accesses the water table and is not merely content to take you know, what's coming up through our well system and drink it anyway. So that's what it would look like for me to aim at Christ conscious at a planetary level spiritually. What would it look like from an intellectual viewpoint? If we were to look as a, a, a planetary group intellectually about health that would take us towards Buddha nature or Christ consciousness. And I want to focus here on the media, because most of our education happens through the media. 
most of our intellectual stimulation is happening through the media, unfortunately. We live in a culture that the Romans described uh, years and years, thousands of years ago as panis et circenses, bread and circuses. That for most people, if you feed us and entertain us, you can do anything with the ideology in which we live and we'll accept it. That is not okay. And the mass media are certainly promoting that notion. Feed them and give them, you know, baseball or Monday night football or whatever, and then you can do anything you want with the political system or the ideology. It is time for us to wake up to the realization that we live in a world in which the mass media have engaged in what I call four reductions. We have taken the human experience, and the humans are capable of, of experiencing many, many, many dimensions of reality. So in the course of an ordinary day, you can experience waking consciousness, dreaming consciousness, deep dreamless sleep consciousness, hypnagogic consciousness, hypnopompic consciousness. You can experience a deity mystical consciousness, or nature mystical consciousness, or formless mystical consciousness, or non-dual mystical consciousness. There are literally thousands of states of consciousness out there. The mass media insist of reducing all states of consciousness down to one. This what we grandiosely call the waking state of consciousness. This is only one state of consciousness which is generating data in this one. You know, they're important data, but they're only one state of consciousness. That's the first reduction. The second reduction they engage in is to take a non-representative subsample of the data from that one state of consciousness and act as if they're actually you know, emblematic of the entire state of consciousness. If you get all of your information from Fox News or the San Jose Mercury News, then you live in a world which is terrifying and fear-inspiring. That is not our world. You're not really finding out what's happening in our world. You're finding out a very biased subsample, and you're focusing that, and you begin to believe that is a total reality. That's the second reduction. The third reduction is that we then take this uh, non-representative subsample from one state of consciousness, and we spin it. It's not enough even to present it to you unadulteratedly. We're going to spin it for you because we've got a particular agenda in mind. And the fourth um, reduction is that we'll tell you then, you don't even have to think about this. You don't have to ask yourself questions. We thought of the questions on your behalf, and we're going to give you the answers now. Here's what you need to buy, or here's whom you need to vote for. So the mass media have done us a tremendous disservice as a globe. We need a totally decentralized system, so we have many different perspectives on the human experience on planet Earth. And we need again to start thinking for ourselves, and we need to start making our maps. We need to be cartographers of multi-dimensional experiences. We need to take our experiences from all of the states of consciousness and make maps that represent the experiences from all those areas. That's what it would look like to me as a planetary system to move towards Christ consciousness. And what would it look like as a planet uh, to look at our dream health?